Thank you.
Well, let's hear it one more time for the MSU Professors of Jazz. Well, thank you so very much for being here. I welcome you to this special announcement celebration, uh, and I will resist the urge to tell you why I am so very happy today because if I started down that road, uh, you'd need to get a hook to get me off. We'd be here for a very, very long time. My principal role is to introduce the distinguished individuals on this stage, so let me begin by introducing our interim president who will lead the celebration today. John Engler was the 46th governor of the state of Michigan and also served as a Michigan legislator for 20 years. Prior to his appointment as interim president of Michigan State University, he led the National Association of Manufacturers and Business Roundtable, an association of CEOs of the largest U.S. companies. He's a graduate of MSU with a Bachelor of Science degree in Agricultural Economics. He holds a law degree from Thomas M. Cooley Law School. And in this context, please let me welcome him as the leader of our band, Interim President John Engler. Well, thank you very much, Dean. I am absolutely thrilled to be here today and delighted to welcome everyone. Uh, this is a great celebration. It's the beginning of uh, a project that so many have waited such a very, very long time for, the uh, construction of the College of Music Pavilion. And very shortly, you're going to have a symphony of heavy equipment sounds outside this building rather than the more pleasant notes that we've just been listening to uh, for the warm-up of this announcement. And I want to thank the musicians from the faculty. This was, this was terrific. And uh, we made a lot of uh, news and uh, talked a lot about the new science and technology facilities that are going to happen at Michigan State. Uh, but we put this project right up there with that. And uh, in some ways, you know, we, you hear a lot about STEM. Well, this puts the A into the STEM. So this gives us a little steam, a little momentum here. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. Our, our university attracts some of the brightest talent from across the globe for our arts and humanities programs, and the College of Music itself uh, has been on a real roll. It's grown from what was a, a smaller department, uh, you might say, a regionally recognized department of excellence to an internationally recognized program, one that's known for excellence in performance, uh, scholarship, music education, and the recent renovations over at Fairchild, the the Cook Recital Center, Ian Byron, and uh, they're, you know, they brought these performance spaces up to some very high standards of excellence. But uh, we've now got more than 600 music majors, some 2,000 non-majors needing space, and uh, the college is simply outgrowing uh, the needs that it has for instruction and rehearsal. And today we're here to fix that. I was curious, just in the audience, I this is the these are the young people, but. Anybody that was born after 1956, if you'd just stand up, after 56, stand up. Who's here? All right, see, this is a pretty, all right. Now, <laughs> very good, yeah, young, young ones, here are the young ones. The last major addition to the 1940 building was before you were born, just want you to know. Uh, I don't know how young or old you're feeling today, but that's how long ago it was. Uh, the original 1940 building was, uh, as, as, as I'm told, a, a WPA building. Now, one thing I don't know, and Dean, you can enlighten me on this, because I, I didn't have time to do the research, because I was at, uh, we have Grandparents University going on today, uh, or for a couple of days, and I was there last night over at uh, Fee Hall talking to them, and one of the grandparents was a music major, and she was telling the stories about being down in the tunnels, and she said it was in the days before uh, smoking was not uh, banned on campus, and she said those were some pretty smoky places at the time, <laughs> pretty grim places, these tunnels. And uh, So I, I don't know much about the tunnels, uh, but uh, when we're done, these won't be tunnels. These are going to be spectacular reversal rooms, and uh, they're going to be appropriate size, properly ventilated, uh, and just superb acoustical properties. So. I mean, that's what our musicians deserve, and uh, the project is going to add something like 40% more space, and then the renovations, obviously, are going to provide much improved spaces to attract many more students to come here, uh, and their faculty members that uh, are teaching them, instructing them, and 
really impressing them with their uh, musical talents. So you get a high quality, acoustically superior teaching, rehearsing and performance spaces. So what does the MSU Pavilion do? It just furthers the reputation. And this is a project that had strong support from the Board of Trustees. You know, we don't always agree on the Board of Trustees, even when it comes to me. But this is one thing, there's unanimity on the board. Everybody's in agreement that this is an important project and it's a commitment on the part of the leadership of the university uh, that we've got to seek and attract talented, creative students and faculty, not just from Michigan, but uh, not just from the talent that we send to places like the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, but we want to attract talent from the nation and the world, and we've been doing that. And when the board approved this, um, they were recognizing that there was more than $7 million in initial gifts from some marvelous donors. That now is up over $11 million, and uh, work continues. Uh, we're going to meet the goal, uh, and we're going to continue to build that private support. That private support has been so important, and um, we're going to be wrapping up uh, the Empower uh, Extraordinary Capital Campaign. Uh, Bob Groves is here. He's ready to take any checks if you want to leave one off today, uh, or if you just want to fill out the pledge card, Anne Marie and others here on the staff are ready to help out. But we're ending the campaign formally in December. We're going to celebrate it in October. But we are absolutely just humbled by the generosity of the donors and we're grateful for their engagement and their vision. And uh, the real cool thing I get to do today is recognize some of the lead donors who are here today. And Dr. Jim Billman, Jr., you know, you have been extraordinary. And uh, he has been uh, an advocate, a vocal advocate, but he's also been a tremendous, tremendous financial supporter. And we, we applaud your service, your work, and your generosity. Thank you very, very much. So, And, and seated next to him as a young woman, she probably can remember perhaps when this building was built uh, because she's 101 years young. She just celebrated that birthday and that's Selma Hollander, a very generous donor in her own right. Thank you, Selma, for being here. And the other couple that I want to recognize, there's so many that we could recognize and it's tough to single out people, but. Uh, in, in, in Jim Billman and Selma uh, and Dee and Byron Cook uh, from Greenville, Michigan. I've known Dee and Byron, I have to say, for almost 50 years now, a long, long time, but their generosity in so many ways, Dee's generosity through her service as a member of the Board of Trustees, um, Dee and Byron for their leadership here at the university, and specifically we're in a hall that uh, their generosity helped to give us what we enjoy today. So thank you also, Dee and Byron, for your leadership. So, and, um, so, well, this is really all I need to say. You're going to hear from uh, uh, Trustee Byron in a moment. We're going to hear from Dee. We're going to hear from one of our really talented students. So uh, they're going to have an official groundbreaking in the fall. But, you know, we're going to start moving dirt here. The fences are, the staking is already being done outside. You can see that the fences are going up. Faculty are going to lose a couple of parking spots uh, for a little while, temporary. We know that's a challenge, but uh, the result of this is going to be something pretty spectacular. And the College of Music is an important part of Michigan State. It, it is something that touches a part of everyone. There ought to be excellent facilities here as this transformative work goes on. So I'm just thrilled that all of you could be here today. And thank you for helping to mark this very special occasion when we did the budget last week with the trustees. We made important statements about tuition and freezing tuition in the next school year, but then we also made an important statement about uh, the facilities that we need here. Not only does the college have to be affordable and compete for these students from all over the world, we've also got to have top-notch facilities to do that teaching and that research in, and this is going to be one of those facilities. So it's a very exciting day, and. Uh, a very positive day for Michigan State University. So thanks for sharing it. Jim. Thank you so much. Uh, I am pleased to introduce Diane Byram, who was elected to the Board of Trustees in 2008 and again in 2016, a partner in Byram and Fisk Advocacy Communications. She served as 
uh, at the Michigan House of Representatives Democratic leader, first elected to the House in 91 and to the State Senate in 95, and then returning to the House in 2002. Trustee Byram, we thank you for your service to the university and for joining us this afternoon. Please welcome the Honorable Diane Byram. Thank you very much, Dean Folger. It's wonderful to be here today representing my colleagues on the Board of Trustees. The trustees are deeply appreciative to our donor partners who are making today a possibility, and I want to personally thank all of you here today. The generosity in partnering with Michigan State University and the College of Music will provide a lasting legacy for generations of students and faculty pursuing their dreams in the field of music and all of us who benefit from the power of music. The Music Pavilion projects, project includes an addition of approximately 37,000 square feet and renovation of approximately 8,400 square feet within the existing music building. And I have to say when I walked in the building today that I do believe it needs renovation. <laughs> Even though I wasn't one of those that could stand <laughs> earlier. This project will also include replacement of many of the windows in the existing building. This addition will support and enhance the learning experiences of our students and support faculty in their teaching, research, and outreach. In addition, it, the, the addition will house performance and rehearsal rooms for jazz studies, bands, orchestras, opera, choirs, and percussion. An additional student practice and rehearsal room facility, facility studios and offices as well as recording in studio spaces. And I know how important that is. I was visiting with Dean Forger earlier, and he was telling me that they have to make sure they counsel students when they come in as freshmen because they don't want them to have the hearing loss because of the, the inadequate acoustics and the fact that they don't like to put the earbuds in as, as often as they probably should. I want to thank those who have been working tirelessly to bring us here today and to those involved with the project planning and implementation. In approximately 18 months, that will go by all too quickly. We look forward to meeting here again to celebrate the grand opening of this exciting and very important project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Trustee Byram. I'm now pleased to introduce a person I've known a long time, Trustee Emeritus Dolores Cook. Dee is a graduate of the College of Communication Arts and Sciences. She served as an MSU trustee for two terms, 1991 through 2006. Uh, she served in many capacities with the MSU Development Fund, Wharton Center Advisory Board, and Capital Campaigns. Uh, she and her spouse Byron, uh, as President Engler mentioned, have been generous to very many areas across this uh, across this campus, and they both serve as charter members of the College of Music National Leadership Council. They have been with us every step of the way in this project. Dee also is uh, currently serving as a co-chair of the Empower Extraordinary Capital Campaign. And uh, one other thing you should know about her is she is a mean jazz singer. <laughs> Would you please welcome Dolores Cook. Thank you for that very warm introduction. It, you know, the university traditionally hands me remarks to me. And I read them because they touch all the right bases and mention all the right people and smile in the right places. And then I'd never read them. <laughs> because I look out at those of you sitting in this room today and I know how you feel because that's how I feel. This has been a long journey. And I thank you, Trustee Byron. I thank you, President Engler, for your help in making this dream a reality. This feels like Christmas Eve to me. <laughs> <laughs> but this journey has had a lot of company. As we started, I look back on this when I first met Jim Forger when he was in, in the College of Arts and Letters, which doesn't exist any longer. The, it's been re, uh, 
it has been changed, and now he is dean of this young college at the smallest college within the university. And what you are here to celebrate today is a testimonial to the hard work of all of the people who joined us on this journey when Dr. Forger became Dean of the College of Music. We had a dream. We changed our dream on this journey. We engaged other people. We went down different roads. But one of the most important things we did was at the suggestion of the dean, we formed within the college a group known as the National Leadership Council of the College of Music. Those people, those members of the college, are from the West Coast, the Midwest, and from the East Coast. They encompass people who were not music majors, who just love music. Some of the members of the Leadership Council are here this morning. Could I ask you if you would please stand and let me applaud all of you for what you have done to help this day become a reality. Please, stand. thank you. We formed an extraordinary friendship and working relationship on this journey. And um, I will tell you that there are uh, days when we thought this would not happen. And we had to make changes in our goals and what we could ex reasonably expect as we moved toward doing something vital for our students, and our faculty in this building. When I received the phone call asking me to co-chair this campaign, Empower Extraordinary, that would have been my third capital campaign at this university. We've only had three. I've been involved in every one of them. This campaign was an opportunity for me once again to touch base with people who love this university from all over the world, all over the country. This capital campaign reached its goal, its stated goal, last July, one year ago. Spartans all over the world pledged $164 billion to students and faculty and programs across this great university. This little college, in the last 14 months, has had an extraordinary journey. And today, we can report that it, our goal is getting closer. We're not there, but we're very close. Um, I, I'm going to stumble you. I almost said Governor Engler. President Engler said the other day that, uh, to me that uh, this campaign now has a little caveat to it. There's always a little caveat when you are doing a program and, and a campaign like this. In April, when the Board of Trustees approved this project, it was noted that our fundraising was not complete. But in the last 14 months, as of yesterday, and now we have reached a goal of $11.3 million. We have left to raise $6,200,000. And we will have met our obligation on this project to the university and the Board of Trustees who approved this project in April. A lot of hard work, a lot of hard work, a lot of time and a lot of wonderful memories have been involved in the raising of the funds for this project. And I want to recognize at this time the very hard work headed by the Dean of the College, Jim Forger, of Rebecca Surian, 
and Lindley and Madison Duggan. Thank you so much for all the dinners you missed with your family, all the late nights you spent <laughs> on the road. <laughs> this small college is a window into this great university. And I look at this day as a day when we can say Michigan State is on the move. It is still on the move. It is an important institution. And this campaign and this achievement for this facility, for our faculty and our students, is a window into the success of this entire university. This facility will transform the capabilities of this college whose reach is wide. It's international, it's national, it's statewide, it's everywhere. My daughter said to me the other day when I shared the news with her that we were going to actually break ground soon on this building in September. And she said to me, Mom, can you imagine what life would be like without music? Of course not. And neither should Michigan State University and our students. We have an extraordinary faculty here, we have extraordinary students, and we have extraordinary donors. Thank you all for being here, and I look forward to seeing you in October, and hopefully by then, we can place a challenge grant in front of the people to finish off this little bit of $6.2 million toward our goal between now and October when the groundbreaking occurs. We will get a million dollar matching challenge grant and I hope all of you will be able to help us reach that $6.2 million goal. Thank you so much. And that can be paid over five years. <laughs> if you're very special, Bob Groves will permit an extra year up to six years. There is no one more special on the stage today than Nikki Sanford. Nikki is a student in the College of Music, and after all, that's who the president, the dean, the trustees, the faculty, uh, uh, everyone who uh, contributes to this university serves. They're the heart. I mean, the faculty is the 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 the, the faculty is is the key, and they recruit and all of those. But we exist in large measure to serve students. So I am delighted to introduce Nicole Sanford, who will represent our student body today. She represents many of the aspects of industrious, hardworking, talented individuals. She's going into her fifth year as a music education major now. Have you read those signs about we need to do this in four years? But I know you do a lot of things, so, uh, so we are so delighted you'll be here for a fifth year. Um, her principal instrument is French horn. She hails from Traverse City, and MSU is a family affair for them because her sister is a second year student in the MSU College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, 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 Rachel plays the mellophone in the Spartan Marching Band until 2017 when she took up uh, that very tall hat with the plume. We won't ask you to do that back band here, but uh, Nikki was the uh, drum major of the Spartan Marching Band. So she's put in a lot of time and service for this uh, university. She participates in a variety of ensembles and chamber groups. She's worked as an intern, is currently a teacher at the MSU Community Music School with a focus on early childhood and music therapy. Therapy. Please welcome Nikki Sanford. Thank you, Dean Forger. I'm honored to be here today on behalf of the student body to thank you all for your generosity. This project will drastically impact our learning experience here at MSU, as I have experienced these facilities through a variety of lenses. I can confidently say that as a student here, a member of the Spartan Marching Band, an intern to the Community Music School, and as a growing educator in this community, your efforts really matter. Our stellar faculty here <coughs> continues to draw new students in, 
However, as other universities continue to expand and update their facilities, recruiting at MSU has become more challenging. I find myself telling prospective students, I know the building looks less than desirable, but I promise the faculty makes up for it. Or, it isn't as rough as it seems, you'll adjust to it. <laughs> this project will make our facilities stand out and ultimately grow our program here as we have outgrown our current building. I am extremely proud to be a part of the College of Music, however, it is time for an upgrade. I'm here to give you a little perspective. The building is so old that the lounge where we study, converse, and eat in is still referred to as the smoker. And, <laughs> yeah. and here at MSU, we are a smoke-free campus, so this is kind of outdated. Our rehearsal space is extremely limited that I have actually had classes and rehearsals in this smoker, and the practice rooms aren't terribly much better. At this point, um, oh, if you do not get out of classes early, there are lines down the hall. At this point, you may as well scrap your practice session and rehearse at some obscure time at night. I choose my apartment, so I suppose my neighbors also thank you. <laughs> if you are able to find a practice room, they are famous for being small, extremely hot even in the winter, and not very acoustically friendly. Having larger practice rooms and additional rehearsal spaces will allow for more students to practice more often. I'm sure there are hundreds of stories to be told about the facilities here, and I can confidently say that the student body is more than thrilled for this renovation. From the updated lounge, added rehearsal spaces, expanded practice rooms, and much more, we thank you. For the seniors out there, you can, enjoy, you can join me in experiencing our last year here full of construction, knowing that we can tell stories, probably exaggerated stories, about the old days here in the College of Music. <laughs> the efforts made by all of you will only enhance our learning experience and give us the space we need and deserve to create music together. You will be able to witness the impact you made on the Spartan community for generations to come, as the current building has impacted thousands already. Just imagine what we will be able to do with this state-of-the-art facility given our amazing accomplishments thus far. We hope you come and enjoy our performances as we are grateful for your efforts. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And just for those fans of the Spartan Marching Band, you will see, I believe it is, uh, July 9, the construction fencing coming, but there's been lots of discussion. There's David Thornton, the director of the Spartan Marching Band. David, will you stand up? So. Now, you're still going to operate. You're not shutting down in the coming year, right? Because we, you rely on Adams Field. Huh? Ready to go. Ready to go. So you're going to take a spot on the, is that the north side? Yeah, terrific. So, and you're going to take a different route in marching around, probably. Whole campus, okay, that's a bonus, so, so, uh, so we're looking forward to that. Um, I mentioned uh, there is no one more important than Nikki on the stage, and indeed that is true. Uh, I also mentioned that the faculty is a core part of this university, and we all work for the faculty, because that, uh, that, that is, those are the, the folks that attract, recruit, retain students, do research, do lots of outreach, uh, and so today representing the College of Music faculty is University Distinguished Professor Rodney Whitaker. He serves as Director of Jazz Studies and Special Assistant to the Dean for Diversity and Inclusion. He founded and recruited the MSU Professors of Jazz, six tenure stream positions. Not all are here today. Some are doing outreach and performances, of course, around. Uh, and I, I can say without exaggeration that he's developed one of the best blues-based jazz programs in the United States. Uh, and I think the quality of this program is emblematic of uh, the faculty in many areas uh, around. And that has grown because the university administration has enabled us over the last 10 or 15 years to retain 15 and 20 uh, faculty that get other jobs. In the case of Rodney, Juilliard came after him. And Joe Polisi, the president of Juilliard, and Wynton Marcellus called him up and said, why don't you come on down, Rodney? So he went to New York. Right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, at that point, uh, Luana Simon was the president, and uh, I was in touch with her, and she said, well, this is a, this is a world treasure. A, a jazz, American jazz, what we've done here, we need to retain Rodney Whitaker. And as a result of that, the program has grown. 
so too is it with many other faculty uh, to the point we've retained 20. So faculty are key and we are grateful to the university for building a stellar faculty that has brought a wonderful student body and hence the need to, to really move forward with some facilities. Rodney's a Mac Avenue recording artist, has performed uh, with a who's who of folks. Uh, uh, he leads the, uh, the professors of jazz uh, with the support of an MSU FCU million dollar grant through communities across this state from Detroit to inner city Lansing to the west to the north uh, three times each semester. And I think that he exemplifies in his faculty the quality, the excellence, the land grant spirit of sharing the best MSU has to offer with the citizens of Michigan. Please welcome Rodney Whitaker. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon, or oh, morning, it's almost afternoon. I guess it's more afternoon now, speaking on the behalf of the College of Music faculty. I'd just like to say two things. One is, I have to, this is a little unorthodox, but I get to give a shout out to the alumni, former faculty and staff that are watching online. There's a live stream going on. And as I was sitting here, staring at my talking points, I normally don't write anything. I usually just, I'm a jazz musician, so I usually just talk. I can do a two hour lecture without notes. It's jazz. So, so I had to write uh, talking points. And as I was sitting there looking at my talking points, I started getting texts saying, get off your phone, <laughs> professor. <laughs> so, and I said, I said to one or two people, I said, you know, I'm actually studying my talking points. And they said, sure you are. <laughs> and it just happened to be when the president was speaking, but no, no disrespect, no disrespect. So what does this music be? I, I, I'd like to take the time first before I say my few comments. Uh, to give a shout out to the faculty and staff that are here. This, I've, I've been to a lot of music programs across the world, traveling as a guest lecturer or guest artist at their school. No faculty and staff in the world at music schools work as hard as the College of Music at Michigan State. So give them a round of applause. I was asked, what does this mean, you know, what does this mean, you know, to the College of Music faculty and staff and students, and uh, I had to hold back the tears of joy because it's, it, re it really is going to change our lives. You know, I was having a conversation with a colleague of mine recently, and he was really saying to me, like, simple things like, man, is there any way that I could rehearse before 8 p.m.? You know, he has a little girl, and he just wants to get home to his little girl. And with this new facility, we'll be able to look at our, we'll be able to look at our schedule and make the quality of life better for our faculty, for our staffs. We have um, antiquated facilities, as you all know. The incremental sort of um, uh, changes that have happened to the building, like this recital hall and, the, and what we have at Fairchild has changed our lives tremendously. But think about this, we'll have classrooms where we're not damaging our ears, we'll have adequate space where we can schedule rehearsals. Oftentimes people, students are working hard, faculty are working hard, trying, making a great effort to prepare the students for their concerts. And, and we don't, we're not able to sometimes just schedule a sectional, or extra rehearsal, because we don't have the space to do it. And it's really sort of a good problem, challenge to have, however, just to have facilities where we are able to grow the program. We couldn't add more students to the building, although we have students from all over the world who want to come to this place. Believe me, they don't come here for our facilities. They come here because we have the greatest faculty in the world, the greatest faculty in the world. And um, I want to also thank um, our development team because I think that oftentimes, I remember years ago when we first got a, became a college and we got a development area, some people didn't understand the significance of having that area at the College of Music. But I think that all of the great things that have happened over the last 10 years or so, so and what they brought to the table, they deserve a round of applause. Thank you, Rebecca. And um, 
We are, uh, the last thing, and I, I think I represent my colleagues in this, is that any investment that the community has made in, to us from the, we like to thank the president, the board of trustees, the provost's office, our leadership council, anything that you've invested in, in us, we pay back twofold. So, so thank you. Again, we look forward to seeing you in the new facilities, and we'll see you soon. Keep on swinging, y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney, and thanks to your colleagues for being here today. Uh, as I reflect upon this space, it shows what you can do in a 1939, 1940 WPA building. Private dollars have made this possible. You used to be in this hall, would be very hot, and you would hear beep, 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 beep. That's what, those were the service vehicles backing up. And so they've created a room within a room. They've created a terrific environment. They've terrific, uh, made wonderful uh, acoustics. As we adjourn into room 120, we will go from a wonderfully renovated space <laughs> to a space that currently serves every ensemble. I see our director of orchestras, Kevin No here. And uh, frequently, you know, cellos will have to be careful with their, you know, not too much emotion there in the uh, rehearsal room, but they are literally to the walls. They're literally to the walls. And so to have a space, a large rehearsal, a medium that will also take care of composition and ambisonics and electronics and the curriculum for the 21st century is just nothing short of thrilling. The room we're going to go into is the space that is going to serve a, a, um, a multiplicity of functions. And it's close to Selma Hollander's heart because the late Stanley Hollander and Selma Hollander have named that space. So when you go in there, we should all thank Selma and we should also imagine new finishes, wood floor, uh, acoustical shells, lighting, and it will serve as the principal space for choirs, operas, uh, s informal student recitals, uh, and um, uh, large cla interactive classrooms. So we still aim to do more with less, and that's not bad about this university. It will be quality, but it will have a number of functions. It will be packed with activity in a space that is just a fabulous renovation. Um, we will have a groundbreaking. It will be on October 19, uh, which is the Friday prior to the MSU, MSU game. And at that time, we'll have the opportunity to thank uh, folks in person, but I'd just like to give a shout out to the National Leadership Council, to the Music and University Advancement Team, to the Faculty Steering Committee that has worked and designed this. That's an important point. The, the builders, the architects, the acousticians, all of those folks have worked with a group of 15 or 18 from the college that have worked. And this is a faculty designed space uh, for, their, for their use. It's been a wonderful process with Bora, with Kierkegaard, with TMP, with Christman Construction, with our great colleagues at Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. So I thank you all. And with that, why don't we adjourn out the door Take a left, take another left, and we'll have some refreshments, uh, and there'll be renderings of all of the new spaces that we will be constructing. Thank you so very much for being here. <laughs>